I'd like to do is uh, go over a little bit, um, an overview with you as far as uh, um, dividing polynomials. And a couple things you guys uh, should know. First of all, when dividing polynomials, it's just like dividing any other um, number when we are looking at as far as doing like long division. You can always take your uh, divisor, which would be x plus 4, and then we're going to divide it into our dividend, which would be x cubed minus 28x minus 28x minus 48. However, um, there is one problem that we do need to make sure that we have. When doing long division with polynomials, we need to make sure that every single degree from descending order is taken care of. So if you notice here, I don't have a, I go from x cubed down to x. I don't have an x squared term. Well, that's a placeholder that needs to be taken care of. So I can just simply write plus 0x squared as a placeholder. Because remember, 0 times x squared is still going to be 0. But we're going to need that placeholder when we're, doing our, uh, when we're doing our long division. And you'll see that throughout my videos, throughout this session, you'll see why that placeholder becomes so important. And you know, how are we going to divide into it? So this is the long division way. I'll show you guys exactly how to do the long division on my videos. Um, but the, I really kind of want to, for the overview, just kind of really talk about what's really happening. Well, when we're dividing, what we're trying to do is we're trying to see is, you know, does this x plus 4 get into, evenly divide into this polynomial? And when we figure that out, if we get 0 down here, and like back in the day we called it r as like remainder, but if we get 0, what that tells us is this evenly goes into it. And whatever up here is our answer, and I believe actually in this one, um, I don't even know the answer, which will be like x squared minus 4x minus 12. Well, what these two are called are our factors. Because I know that x plus 4, since I get a remainder, that looks like 4, but since I get a remainder of 0, that means it's a remainder. So therefore, this evenly divides into it. And how many times does it divide into it? It divides into an x squared minus 4x minus 12. Now, I can factor this out a little bit farther, which I'm going to do in just a second here. But so far, these are our two factors. And remember, we can set up linear factors to find our zeros. First of all, our two factors equal our f of x. So therefore, if I was to multiply these back out, I would get my original function again. But what I'm really concerned about is finding the zeros. And what do the zeros tell you? Remember, the zeros are going to be your x-intercepts of your graph. And they're going to tell you, you know, what x values make our function 0. So I can say that x plus 4 equals 0, and x squared minus 4x minus 12 equals 0. So therefore, this can be factored even further to, I'm just going to write x plus, x plus 4, x minus 6, no, x minus 6, x plus 2. Yeah, that's right. So therefore, I can say x minus 6 equals 0, and x plus 2 equals 0. Now, this is so helpful because I can now say that my zeros are negative 4, 6, and negative 2 when solving for x. This is very, very important because here comes a really big mistake students made. Notice how my factor that I divide into was x plus 4. My zero was at negative 4. Now, there's a couple really key things that happen when we know what our zeros are. So now, that was long division. You can do all this long division. You could have divided by um, x minus 6. That's another factor you could have divided into. You also could have divided x plus 2. And either way, you always would have got you know, a different polynomial up there, but you still would have always gotten back your original zeros and factors. Now, the other method that we look at is synthetic division, where you have k, and k is going to be your zero. Not your factor, but your zero. And then you have ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. What I, even, I mean, you don't have to, it's not, re, it's not limited to a third power polynomial. You could really be even up higher or even less. 
But for this case, I'm going to use a third power polynomial. Exact same thing. You have to have, you're going to take now the coefficients of your, now you're going to take the coefficients of each one of your terms and plug them in. K is going to be your zero. So if my factor is x plus 4, I know my 0 is going to be negative 4. And if you just want to set it up, if you don't know, just take x plus 4, set it equal to 0, and figure out what your 0 is. And this becomes very important when you have something like this. When that's your factor, your 0 is going to be 4 thirds. So it's very important for you to understand when you're doing synthetic division, to represent it as a zero and not as a factor. All right, so let's go and take a look at what I would look at here. So if I was actually going to do this problem, my zero would be a negative four, and here would be a one. Again, I don't have an x squared, so it's going to be zero, a negative 28, and a negative 48. Now, I'm going to show you, we'll go through the synthetic division part. I'm not really concerned about that right now. You guys can watch the other videos. For that but what I get is um, again I get my polynomial down here x squared uh, oh, I get 1 negative 4 negative 12 0 so I get x squared minus 4x minus 12 um, is my polynomial so again, when I've taken the zero, what happens is I am now given my, again, my polynomial, which is another factor, which I can factor down to get my other two factors. Last thing I want to show you. You need to know how to use division, um, synthetic division and long division. The reason why is once you're given a factor or given a zero, you can use synthetic division to find the other factors or the other zeros. But there's also one more important part that I want you to understand. If I know what a zero is, or even if I know what one of my factors are. So, so far I have my zeros. <clears throat> so far my zeros are negative four, six, and negative two. A really cool important part that we know is if we evaluate our function for all of our zeros, what I will get I'm going to get, when I plug in my zero in front of my factor, I'm going to get f of zero. So what that tells me is if I have my zero and I evaluate it and I get zero, that means the factor for the zero, negative four, is going to be a zero of my function. And that's going to work for all of your zeros. You can evaluate them for your zero to double check to make sure that they're going to give you the value for that function. And I really, um, it's really all I really need to uh, say about that. So, you know, there's a couple of things. You know, you know that's a zero. So since you know that's a zero, you could say that, uh, you know, negative four comma zero is a uh, inter inter uh, intercept for your graph. You could also say that six comma zero and also negative two comma zero. Those are all gonna be intercepts of your graph. Um, so whenever you plug in, evaluate, and you get zero, you know it's a zero. Or when you use synthetic division for a factor or a long division, and you get a remainder zero, well, you know that that's going to be a factor. And whatever the remaining polynomial factored down will also be your other factors.